Hydropower Project Analysis with Red Screen Expert. Part 1. A Quick Analysis with the Virtual Energy Analyzer. In this video, I'm going to show how to rapidly investigate the financial viability of a grid-tied hydropower project using Red Screen Expert. I'll demonstrate this with a hypothetical small hydro project in Quebec, Canada. If you are new to Red Screen Expert, you might want to first view the video Introduction to Power Projects with Red Screen Expert. I'll assume that you are familiar with the basic functionality and features of the Red Screen tool and focus on aspects of its use that are specific to hydropower. Let's say that my proposed project will entail a run of river development at a site where there is an elevation change of around 80 meters. I've been given data describing the distribution of flows in the water course. I think that I can design my project to make use of around 70 cubic meters per second of flow. I'm guessing that this will result in a roughly 50 megawatt project. Now I'll examine this project with Red Screen Expert. I'm starting this video with the Red Screen Expert software open. At this point, I would normally configure the software for the language, units, currency, and other settings appropriate to the analysis. For this demonstration, I'll leave the current settings of English, metric, and Canadian dollars. On the settings tab of the file page, you can change the currency, language, etc. From this home screen, there are a number of options for starting our feasibility analysis. Many of these options are found under the Getting Started Options column. If I wanted to start with the completely blank analysis, I could click on Feasibility. It would be faster, however, if I could open the feasibility analysis already configured for this type of hydro project, with the input cells already populated with reasonable default values. And indeed, Red Screen Expert can do this for us through its Virtual Energy Analyzer. The set of default values describing a typical project is referred to as an archetype. I'm going to start with the hydropower archetype selected through the Virtual Energy Analyzer. The Virtual Energy Analyzer picks the archetype based on four pieces of information. The type of facility, the technology, the size of the project, and its location. By default, it opens with photovoltaic power plant selected. The hydro project is also a power plant, so the facility type selection can remain the same, but I will change the technology type to hydro turbine. For the size of the project, I have to estimate this based on my general knowledge of the site characteristics. Fortunately, I'm not locking myself into anything. If I pick one size, but the analysis shows that for the flow and head my project is actually larger or smaller, it does not have drastic implications. I simply change my inputs and continue on. For the size of the project, I choose 100 megawatts because it is the option that is closest to the capacity of this proposed 50 megawatt project in relative terms. Compared with 50 megawatts, a 10 megawatt project would be smaller by a factor of 5, but the 100 megawatt project is larger by only a factor of 2. Since my project is not exactly 100 megawatts, later on I'll have to adjust some of the values proposed by RetScreen. You may have noticed the three and a half yellow stars at the top right of the Virtual Energy Analyzer dialog box. The number of stars conveys how complete the archetype is. As we will see, the hydro archetype is not as complete as many of the other archetypes, like those for wind and photovoltaic projects, which receive five stars. This is due to the very site-specific nature of hydropower production and costs. The archetype does not include site details for this particular proposed project, so it falls short of a four-star rating. Now I just have to indicate the location of the project. For the purpose of this video, let's say my site is somewhere northwest of Quebec City. I'm going to zoom out so that I can see most of southern Quebec, and then drop the project thumbtack about where I think the project is. As I'll explain shortly, there is a reason I have not been very careful in the placement of this project thumbtack. Having done this, I've told the Virtual Energy Analyzer all it needs to know. To confirm these selections, I close the Virtual Energy Analyzer by clicking on the Calculate button indicated by a green check mark. The Virtual Energy Analyzer screen closes, and Red Screen Expert takes a few seconds to configure my analysis. When it is done, I can see, by clicking on the various tabs across the top, that I have a pre-feasibility analysis of a 100 megawatt hydro project. On the location page, I can confirm from the map the location of my project and by the globe thumbtack, the location for which climate data is being supplied. 
This climate data is displayed in the table below the map. So which of these climate data will RETScreen Expert use for this analysis? Actually, RETScreen does not use any of it in the energy calculation. The output of a hydro project is related to the characteristics of the watercourse at the site, and these climate data tell us nothing about that. That is why I was cavalier about placing the project thumbtack. For a real project, however, there would be a number of reasons for accurately citing the project with the Virtual Energy Analyzer. Some of the decisions I'll make when entering parameters will be informed by the latitude and longitude of the site and possibly the temperature, which I'll take from this climate data. If I prepare a report for a client, I'll want the map to show the location of the project. Also, if I later do a performance analysis for the project, I'll want to have the correct location specified, since RETScreen will use this location when downloading site weather data from NASA. You can learn more about this in the video Performance Analysis with RETScreen Expert. On the facility page, there are some inputs specific to me and my project that I should fill out. For example, I might want to change the description and the facility name to something more appropriate for my 50 megawatt project and enter my name and my client's name in the prepared by and prepared for cells. You can learn more about these entries in the Introduction to Power Projects with RETScreen Expert video and the Portfolio Analysis with RETScreen Expert video. On the Energy page, there are several things I'll want to adjust. First, selecting Electricity and Fuels shows that RETScreen Expert has assumed that electricity will be sold at a rate of 10 Canadian cents per kilowatt hour. This default value reflects the settings on the file page, so if I were always doing projects in a certain market, I could set the default to something appropriate for that market. But I can also simply change the value here in the energy page for this analysis only. I'll assume that my project would be paid 6 cents per kilowatt hour. Don't be concerned that natural gas appears here. A fuel is always included by default, even if it isn't being used, like in this hydro project. I also note that on the left there are six 100 megawatt hydro projects. Why did RETScreen generate six projects? The answer is suggested by the names of the six projects. In parentheses, there is a percentage in the range of 25% to 75%. This is the capacity factor, or average plant output expressed as a percentage of rated capacity. Remember that the climate data does not tell RETScreen about the flow characteristics for the site so it has no way of knowing what the capacity factor for the project will be. So RETScreen generates six projects, assuming a different capacity factor for each, and lets us decide which of these to use. Since I want a single project and not six projects, I'm going to pick one project and delete the rest. This is done by right-clicking on the name of the project and selecting Delete. I'll pick the 45% capacity factor project, but this is just a guess. When I click on the remaining project, it opens a Level 1 analysis that the Virtual Energy Analyzer has prepared. Level 1 is the simplest analysis. In a Level 1 analysis, the capacity factor is not calculated, but rather specified by the analyst. This might be useful to a project developer who already has a good idea of the capacity factor to expect at this site and does not want to recalculate this. I've chosen the project with a capacity factor of 45%, but I can overwrite this value if I had reason to believe that it should be something else. I'll put in 50%. RETScreen uses this capacity factor to calculate the electricity production of this project, but right now it is applying this capacity factor to a 100 megawatt project. I'll change this to 50 megawatts so that the production can be calculated correctly, and I'll also update the project name. Note that the name change is reflected in the navigation pane at the left. At the bottom of the analysis, I see that this 50 megawatt project generates 219 gigawatt hours in an average year. If the project is paid 6 cents per kilowatt hour, this results in annual revenues averaging around $13 million. I'll leave the other cells as is. I can ignore the gray cells, which are for informational purposes only. Below these, there are cells for the initial costs and the operating and maintenance costs. These values come from the built-in cost database, which I can open by clicking on the dollar sign icon to the right of the cell. The cost of a hydro project is highly dependent on the civil works required by the site. Since I have said nothing about these, the initial cost estimate given here is essentially a guess. 
we'll return to cost estimation later on. If I now go to the cost page, I'll see that these costs are carried over from the energy page, as long as I am using a level 1 analysis in the cost page. On the emissions page, the virtual energy analyzer has provided a level 1 analysis, that is, an analysis based on average emissions factors. RETSCREEN's database indicates that 8 kilograms of CO2 equivalent are emitted, on average, to generate 1 megawatt hour of electricity in Quebec. This low value reflects the province's reliance on hydropower. The 7% average losses in the transmission and distribution, or T&D, system is a reasonable first guess for most countries with a strong electric grid. Including these losses, an average of 9 kilograms of CO2 equivalent are emitted for each megawatt hour of grid electricity consumed. My hydro project may have different T&D losses than the average generator on the Quebec grid. Maybe it is nearer or further to major loads than the average generator. Here I'll assume that losses are equal to the average percentage of losses and leave this at 7%. In the real world, you might want to investigate. Based on these inputs, RETSCREEN calculates the difference in emissions between my hydro project, which is referred to here as the proposed case, and the grid, or the base case. This works out to around 1,800 tons of CO2 equivalent annually. Since I'm comparing hydropower with a largely hydropowered grid, the difference is small. It is unlikely that it would be worthwhile to try to sell these emissions reductions, but if I did find a buyer, I could enter the price per ton of CO2 equivalent at the bottom of this page, and this would open additional cells related to escalation rates and transaction costs. In other geographic areas, this analysis might be necessary but it is not warranted here. Finally, we get to the finance page. RETSCREEN Expert has filled out the inputs necessary for a level 2 analysis. I'm going to adjust a few of them, however. I'll change the lifetime to 30 years, extend the debt term to 20 years, raise the electricity escalation rate to 2.5%, and change the debt interest rate to 5%. Under these assumptions, this is not quite a profitable project. The net present value is negative, and the internal rate of return on equity is 6%. The energy production cost is 8.8 .8 cents per kilowatt hour, which is considerably more than the 6 cents per kilowatt hour I am being paid. That is a quick analysis of the hydro project, but one that has ignored the site-specific conditions that dictate project performance and costs. In the following parts of this video, I'll look at these in more depth.